And What's here we up, are again. everybody? <laughs> We're back. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our live stream. Hey, Patrick. Hey, Hello. Rich. How's it going? Jeremy, how you doing down there? <laughs> How's everybody doing tonight? Uh, I see we have almost uh, almost 100 people with us tonight. So that's good to see. Are you all um, ready to have some fun? We're going to have some fun tonight. We've got a special guest. We have actually two special guests, guests tonight. The first one I'm going to bring in right now, and some of you are already familiar with him, and that is uh, Woof Woof over there. Hello. <laughs> uh, Jerry, it's 3 HP. What's going on, uh, everybody? How Hello, are Jerry. Good to see you. Oh, hello. Oh, actually, I wow. just saw you. We, I just got off a live stream with Jerry. Just I didn't, a I didn't think ago. it was possible, but your hair on your face actually you know, got whiter when you took yeah, the when mask off. Yeah, when I took off. it off, I was going to do this, but it's pretty <laughs> shaved right now. Yeah, I streamed for a little over three hours today. Yeah, I had a lot of fun. Okay, so, so yeah, we, we, we had fun today, and uh, I didn't get fully prepared for tonight's live stream, but I think I'm prepared enough. Wait, uh, can you name one that you are fully prepared for? That you were? Uh, any of them? In the last year? Yeah. Uh, I don't think so. Yeah, yeah. see, I'm drawing a blank, too. I'm never fully prepared. Well, I'm sort of prepared tonight. Uh, and then Jerry distracted <laughs> me this afternoon because all of a sudden he posted something on Facebook and tagged me in the post. And I said, oh, well, let me jump on Jerry's stream. And then somehow or another, I got stuck there for about an hour and a half. <laughs> But anyway, it's it's always it's always uh, it's always fun on Jerry's live streams. If you guys don't know it, Jerry, tell them when you're live streaming. Every Saturday, 12 p.m. Pacific. I live in Vegas. I have up to 10 makers at a time on camera. Uh, we do talk about 3D printing, lasers, resin, a little bit of painting, uh, food, a little bit of anything and everything. And I like say stream for usually three hours. I would okay, have joined and- today, but I was at a track meet. I wasn't yeah. running though. So I popped um, in for a few minutes just in time to see Kenny hold up my he is risen thing. <laughs> yeah, yep. And I, I love that one. Tonight, um, I'm doing something a little different. Uh, I've already cut this out. So uh, because we have a guest tonight, another guest tonight, but uh, I'm doing one of my uh, Kleenex boxes tonight. Nice. And I'm, I'm, I've already cut it out. In fact, uh, Jeremy and I were on before the live stream and I was cutting back then. So I'm going to put that together and show you all that project. And um, Patrick is going to do something on the CO2, and I'll Jeremy is going to be this. doing something on the, and Jeremy is going to be doing something on the fiber laser. But before we get to that, Wait, I would like to bring on. <laughs> before we get to that, we have a special guest tonight, and that is. Emily. Hello, uh, mom. Emily. Hi, mom. Mom. <laughs> Hi guys. <laughs> hey, Emily. How are you doing? I'm great. I'm excited to be here. So, uh, why don't Thank you, you for joining us? Those people that that don't know, you can do your mm-hmm. introduction introduction to yourself. We have over 160 people watching right now, and okay. then I'll do my take on your intro. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm, I didn't I didn't practice an intro. Can it just be? Uh-huh. Just tell well, us about yourself. <laughs> Are we Wicked. judging That's our intro, way. like holding up signs, like yeah, nine, uh, eight, yeah? Like everybody ten. have their signs ready. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, hi, everybody. My name is Emily. Uh, I'm known as that mom with a laser. And for short, believe it or not, a lot of my community, they call me mom. Mom. (laughs) Um, And so I have been around uh, for a couple of years. I have a channel. I have a really great Facebook group. I do a lot there. I have a laser course, online laser course. And I like to, you know, have fun with people uh, making reels on TikTok and Instagram. Um, my main focus is teaching people how to use their lasers. Um, to, long story short, when I got my laser back in 2019, um, I felt like I was one of the few women at the time who didn't have a hobby laser like a Glowforge, but actually a, a, a scary fire breathing dragon <laughs> that I had brought into my guest room. And, so and I, I was, watched you and I watched you assemble that laser, too. You did, the, and I was from the okay. stand, the mirror, the mirror seven, right? <laughs> yeah, the mirror seven, right here in this room that is now it's now my office. Yeah. But um, it was really hard to teach myself how to use that thing because I'll be honest with you, I am not the most technical person. I girl math my way through life, okay, 
And at the time, everybody on YouTube was very technical. It was very hard to understand people. And so um, long story short, I figured, you know, I bet if I could show particularly women how to understand a laser, that they would, those that were having, you know, businesses, they would eventually invest in something that would be more efficient and something that could make them, you know, 20 ornaments in an hour instead of maybe two or three. And so I'm known for kind of uh, shifting, uh, in a way, the industry and bringing a lot of women into laser engraving uh, too. So that's kind of my background, but I do a lot of things. I lose track. Awesome. And, uh I just want to say uh, a couple of things about Emily. Let me see if I can shift this to the other side. No, nope, that didn't do it. Okay, so we'll do it like this. So, uh, first off, I've, I've, when I go on YouTube, I want to be entertained. So, if you come to my channel, you're not going to get that. <laughs> That's just not me. I don't enjoy watching my videos, but a lot of people enjoy them because... Um, I read the Lightburn manual. My channel is all about Lightburn, and but I go out seeking other other videos for entertainment. And Wait, I found you, Emily. You read the manual? I read the manual. No. Mm -hmm. I teach from the manual. So <laughs> I go out seeking other forms of entertainment when I want to watch uh, YouTube. And about four years ago, uh, I think it was one of Emily's first videos. And she was unboxing um, or, or just took delivery of a Mira 7 and didn't even have that laser in her house yet. So uh, it, she was putting together the, the frame of the laser. And I said, OK, well, I guess I'll subscribe. I subscribed and I watched another video and then I watched another video. And it was actually uh, and her videos just kept getting better and better. And. I, except for the vertical thing at that time. You know. I got over it. I fixed it. I fixed it. <laughs> she got over that. Yeah. But um, her, one of her videos actually inspired me to get involved with uh, a local person here at a flea market, a disabled lady that was making earrings. And, and Emily did a video on um, acrylic fill, filled emails. Uh, emails, <laughs> earrings. So um, it inspired me to go down to the flea market and look around and see what people are selling. And I found this woman that was um, hand cutting her earrings and she was doing it on a, um, uh, what do you call that saw? A scroll saw. Scroll saw. Thank you. <laughs> and it just took her forever to do it. And she was getting, you know, eight, nine bucks a pair, but uh, it kept her in food because she was elderly on disability and so forth. And um, I bought one of her earrings, brought it back to the shop, and I, I made some template earrings, a whole bunch of them, put them in a bag, brought them down to her the next week. And ever since, uh, she's been getting her earring blanks from us, and she's no longer worried about food or anything else. So it was your video, Emily, that inspired all of that and actually changed someone's life. And her videos have actually gotten better, much better over time, you know, and are very entertaining. And I just love watching it. And down below, right down there, you can see all of her information. So it's that mom with the laser .co, co not com. Uh, she has an online laser course now that she teaches. And let me tell you, folks, four years ago when she first started, she's showing people in Lightburn how to cut shapes and everything else. So you know, she really didn't plug herself as well as she should have because she she picked it up just like that and started making great projects that uh, everybody loved. And I'm not quite sure. So I'm going to ask you all a favor here tonight. I'm going to put a link in the description to her uh, website. So let's see. Right here. Thank you, Rich. I I'm going to put it into the chat, and I would like that if you guys can uh, go and subscribe to her channel. There it is, right there. So uh, everybody should see that link now, because you're going to love some of the videos that she puts out, and uh, it's just really a pleasure 
to uh, have you here tonight with us, Emily. So thanks for, for joining us tonight. Thank you. I, I see I have some of my alumni in the, in the yes, chat there. Thank you yeah, guys yeah, just, for coming and hanging out. I, I love, I love, I love the course. I will, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that too, but you know, you mentioned how I was teaching about uh, light burn. Hey Jill, thanks for being here. Um, so here's the thing. When I got that laser, that was our last hope. It was all of our money, all of our savings. Um, and like you, you know, I had the, I had a six month old, a two month, two year old. I remember you saying old. that. I remember you saying that. <laughs> and uh, yeah. I didn't have, Lightburn was not included with my my laser, none of that stuff. So, and I didn't have any money to invest in Adobe Illustrator or even paying thirty dollars for Silhouette Studio was it felt like too much of a stretch. So I forced myself to really learn Lightburn so much so that it has become the only software I use. So I've become very proficient with it. I the the laser files I design. Um, I've done a lot of them from scratch in Lightburn, no editing, I, like all that stuff. <laughs> um, and so, the yeah, so, like I said, you know, you're 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 like an expert at this now. And there should be just so many more people watching your channel. It baffles my mind, uh, you know, how you don't have more more subscribers. And I know that you've got branches out in every direction with the, you know, the Instagram, the TikTok and all that stuff. And when you put it all together, it's a lot of people that are that are watching you. But, uh, you know, the people that are my age, they tend to stick to they, they don't go to those platforms. They tend to stick to YouTube. So, uh, you know, I'd like to see some of our regular viewers. And we've got over 220 of them watching right now. Come uh, hang out. You know, I'd like to see you all go hang out with Emily as well, because I, her videos are just so much fun. <laughs> I promise to do my best to entertain you. <laughs> I thought I was subbed and I'm. Not, but I am now. I just went and did it. What? Awesome. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you. I know everybody else here is already. Um, but yep. tonight we are going to offer some uh, free files as usual. And let me see because I'm, I want to make sure that uh, I'm going to tell you the right files here. You know how I am with this kind of stuff. <laughs> I'm going to disappear for a few minutes and mute myself because I have some prep to do for what I'm supposed to do tonight. So I'll be right back. Yep. Can sure, I no ask problem. a question? It says join the chat because I want to I want to I want to say hi to these people but without interrupting you. But then it says connect to YouTube. Will that kick me off of StreamYard if I do that? Uh, no, it shouldn't. I don't okay, think it will. Well, if I get kicked off, I'll come right back. But I want to be able okay, to chat. No problem. <laughs> okay. So uh, tonight. As I was just saying, um, we I am going to have, and I've already got the package done, so there's not going to be any any waiting. Uh, I'm going to have an Easter tea light, uh, which is going to be this He Has Risen tea light. So this file is going to be in the package. Uh, I'm going to have a Kleenex box, and I'm going to have the Pledge of Allegiance flag that I did last week, all of these packaged together. Very so, nice. Uh, the Wavy Flag, Flag Pledge of Allegiance. Now, I it, will have four free files that aren't from me, though. I'm going to post a link to four files that Patriot Nation Design gave, gave away, and I'm going to give you the link, and then you can download those files from Patriot Nation Design, and I'll be making one of those tonight. Yeah, and if, if you guys can hold off on the questions for uh, just a few minutes, um, that, <laughs> that would be great. Uh, I see you found your way to the comments, Emily. I did, I did. <laughs> now, and I am giving away nothing. <laughs> I feel kind Jerry's of bad. Away I, feel, <laughs> I feel kind of bad that I'm not making a project with you guys, but I can show you. Oh, no, that's okay. Our guests, our guests usually don't make projects. So, well, then I ha I'll have to come back so I can make a project with you. Can I do that? But I hope yeah. you're, I hope you're going to show You've got show it. and tell, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I hope you're going to show and tell projects. projects. <laughs> yeah. Well, we've got, we've got the mermaid, which was a big deal. <laughs> um, is that, is that, um, that's not Jason's mermaid, is it? No. No, that's no, my no. mermaid. Well, yeah, I did watch yeah. your video where you made it, but I didn't see where you painted it, but I did watch the video. I, well, where you made I. It. I just painted it this week and I haven't edited that footage, but that is going to be my next tutorial is how I did the paint. And it ended up coming out. So for those of you who aren't familiar with what's going on, 
Uh, let me move over here so you guys can see it better. Um, this week was my little girl's birthday and we had a mermaid birthday party. So I figured, okay, I'm, I've been wanting to make something massive so that I could make a really good pass through tutorial. Um, so I made the biggest mermaid tail I could freaking make. It's 75 inches tall. So if you, <laughs> if you have a pass through and you're afraid to use it, don't be, go watch my tutorial. You're going to love using your pass through after that. Um, and so I made, I made the pass through tutorial and then I had to figure out how to paint it. And I wasn't, I've never done this before, but did it not turn out freaking amazing? Yeah, well, it's awesome. it yeah. It looks very good. <laughs> and then what I did, Rich, I got really confident. I was like, okay, well, oh, you can't see it. But I also made her name for the backdrop. Right. Okay. And mm -hmm. I got so confident. I said, you know what? I'm going to go live and I'm going to spray paint this thing live on TikTok. So I did that the other day <laughs> um, and I, I saved all that footage so that I can make a tutorial on it. And then I also have my little coral over there. Um, and then I made a cake topper right in light burn. These are easy, you know? Yeah. Uh, I love cake toppers. People love cake toppers. This, I wish, can I, sh I can't show a photo. Could I, to, to show you guys? You can, the uh, at the bottom you'll see present and you can share a screen. Oh, okay. All right, let me pull up the photo first, first so I can have it ready. This one ended up being a cake top, a cake charm. So it sits on the face of the cake instead uh -huh. of on top. I'm kind right. of mad because I did something really cool, and one of the kids ripped it off and it got lost. But I, I took a little – I made a little – like one of these things. I don't know what you call it, but I cut one of these. Yeah. And then uh -huh. I took a heat gun, and I heated the, the tip, and I bent it. And then oh, I cool. took – and then I glued it to the back here, and I oh stuck wow it into the cake. It would stick in the cake. Yep. Very yeah, nice. I didn't want to mess with curve, and I was rushing, and I didn't want to make like an. It's also very tiny, so creating a slotted stand right in here is very little. Yeah, yeah no, that's a good. That was a good idea. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> Let me pull up the picture so I can show you guys. See, how that, it works. that and this is one of the things I like about Emily is is her creativity. Um, I actually did a, a sign for a bedroom sign for a newborn nephew and following one of her videos and I copied it. <laughs> you did? I want to see this. <laughs> I did. Well, it's in New York now, but <laughs> I, I should have taken a picture of it, but, uh, and I didn't want to infringe on your copyright. So <laughs> even though oh, I stop. did, sort of. <laughs> I'd love to see but, it. The next time I go for a visit, I will snap a picture and I will text it to you. <laughs> okay, thank you. All right, let me find this picture here so I can show it. Hold on. Where did I put it? I'll be right back to you while you do that. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and uh, speaking of moms, there's a little mom sign right there. Jeremy can... Uh, you put that a little closer to the camera. Oh, Jeremy's got uh, Jeremy's. Uh, oh, yep, yeah, he's on. Um, muted it out. I forgot I about that. Hey, if you want, you can pull my pull my uh, screen up there. I did a video uh, a couple weeks ago about uh, framing odd shaped objects on your laser. Well, my honeycomb uh -huh. is not indexed to be in square. So I use cardboard, put magnets down, and yep. cut out the shape that I'm going to use for this board. So I got it. So I get it absolutely centered, so that I didn't leave myself much room for error. And then yeah. I also have a smaller version that you can see in the back. It's for a uh, six inch, or yeah, six inch tall piece of wood. And what I did was I just cut the two templates out and saved the cardboard, so I could put it back in the center and then. Put the wood back in the cardboard, smaller cardboard. Jerry, I think, template, I, I think you're sense. echoing again, Jerry. Sorry. I am. Yeah. Wow. I think so. so. I'll show you how that works. Oh, it stopped just now. No, maybe not. Yeah, a jig. It's a jig setup. Yeah. That was just using. That was just using some cardboard so that it would be absolutely perfectly centered. And uh, speaking of that, 
right now I have some uh, B-roll that I'm working on, on uh, doing perfect positioning on any material by cutting your own jig and taping it down to a laser bag on any laser. So if you're not fortunate enough to have a laser matic like I've got behind me, that's absolute in every, you know, in every way, then uh, this video is going to help you. That's coming out next week on doing exactly what Patrick is talking about. Emily, did you find that uh, screen sharing yet? I did. Am I doing okay. that right? Yes, ma'am. So there it is. Is that Oh, right? look at that. Oh, wow. It, it just stuck into the face of the cake. And you don't, you, if you've never melted acrylic, it's really cool. Like I thought it would get kind of like, I don't know, maybe like drip or something. But once it's just hot enough, it just kind of moves into whatever shape you want it to. Move. Yeah, I made windshield. I made windshields with my boat with a with a heat gun. Yeah, yeah, that's really cool. <laughs> the cake is epic. I, I have a really really great friend who's very talented. Um, Greg is asking um, if this was made on a laser matic. It wasn't. It was actually made. And talking about, you know, I, I know I mentioned to you guys, I wear a lot of hats. In addition to all the stuff that I do, I'm also the brand ambassador for Eon Laser USA. So I, the tail is actually made with an Eon Nova 14, which is a 130 watt machine. And it's got and, this massive pass through. And, and while uh, we're on that topic, I just want to let uh, everyone know that uh, Emily, as the brand ambassador, invited Patrick and I to the ISA show, the ISA Expo in Orlando in March 10th, 11th, and 12th. And we are, Patrick and I are going to be live streaming from the ISA show on at least the 10th and 11th on the evening. We're going to do shoot all our video during the day and then we're going to live stream in the evening. And there are a ton of laser manufacturers that are going to be there. So we're going to go out and interview them all. And we're going to start with Eon on Wednesday night. And so you'll see this pretty face again <laughs> in our live stream when we are at the uh, ISA show in Orlando, Florida. And if Actually, you got... I thought you were going to put me on big screen. Rich. Yeah, when you said pretty I, face, I thought you I were talking about face, me. So that's, that's why I didn't put you up there. I got confused <laughs> again. Sorry. <laughs> You're going to get to see my mermaid in person because, you know, one of the nice things that they've done, it, Eon is it's just, it's a very classy brand. It really is. They're very nice yeah. about the stuff that they do. Um, so in addition to bringing in, you know, great influencers like you guys, um, they're reaching out to their customers and saying, we want to display your work. This is a massive show. Over 20,000 people will be visiting, you know, so you'll see a lot of work from their customers on display there. So my tail made the cut. <laughs> yeah. And Wendy is saying that uh, she's not sure if she has one or not, but no, she does not have a laser matic. But um, this channel is not about Lasermatic. The only reason we talk about it so much is because everyone but uh, Jeremy has one. So, <laughs> you know, uh, yep. and we're working on that, too. So, yes, Kenny, uh, you're right. I do mean April. What did I say? March? Yeah. I probably said March. April, but, April. You know, April. Yeah. Through the, through the 12th. And if you happen to be in the Central Florida area, please come and see us. There's going to be a ton of us there. It's in Orlando. Um, and then to answer your question, you're saying, which ones do I run? So I run, I run four different lasers. I have a, a Mira five and they're all eons. So I have an Eon Mira five. That's a uh, 40 watt an Eon Mira seven. That's a 60 watt. And then the Nova 14, that's 130 watts. And then I have an EMP fiber laser that I am starting to play with. And I can't oh, wait. Oh, fiber laser. There. Yeah. I haven't seen you do anything on that yet. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's, I, I juggle too many things, but I have been playing with it a lot behind the scenes, and I'm excited to show people stuff when there's time. <laughs> cool. So, Patrick, um, yes. what are you doing tonight? Uh, well, here. On my cheap Chinese laser that definitely could be updated, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I am running one of the free Patriot Nation design files. Oh, and that's right. When, when it's done, it's going to be this. Oh, wow. Oh, very nice. Oh, very nice. Yeah, I saw that one on Patriot Nation design, and I really like that one. In fact, I yeah, was going to download that myself. I saw this, and like, I'm going to get uh, some Poplar and do this on Poplar because I think it'll look 
Amazing. I, I am going to go next door for a moment because I have to uh, hit submit on something. And then uh, I'll be right back. So, Patrick, take over, please. All right. Patrick, I see a question I'm, in the comments. Can I answer it? Absolutely. Go okay. right ahead. Um, tw tw 2380 MG is asking, you know, what does a 100 plus watt laser do that a 30, 40 watt doesn't do? And that's that's actually a really great question. So a, a 130 watt laser, the, the bigger the tube, the thicker the material you can cut and the bigger the material you can cut, right? So the laser bed size on a Nova 14 is 55 by, oh gosh, like 36, I want to say. So I, I fed, if you go to my, my YouTube channel and you see the pass-through video, I took a four by eight sheet of plywood and I fed it through that machine. So, you know, you can't really do that with that, that width. I would say yeah. mm -hmm. um, with a 40 or 30 watt because the bed size is going to be a lot smaller. Um, and so those machines are primarily for really heavy cutting. Like if I'm going to be cutting blanks, for example, it's ideal. Um, things like that. Whereas my like my my 40 watt uh, Mira 5, that has turned into my um, my my blanks engraving machine. It's very fast. And that's stuff that I want to turn very quickly. So, for example, pencils last school season <laughs> you guys are gonna you're gonna die when i tell you this but i can't remember the number off the top of my head but i want to say i made 16 to 16 to twenty thousand in about three to four weeks uh selling wow. pencils pencils oh, wow. and so that little 40 watt mira mira five <laughs> i mean i was turning them i i would i would sell 10 pencils for 11.99 okay no, not without free shipping. Okay. I did this on TikTok and I would make about 10 pencils in one, somewhere between one to two minutes. Okay. What were and you then, engraving uh, on the pencils? Was it like someone's names. name or custom? Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Like people, people wanted to gift their kids gifts for going back to school or their grandparents or whatever. Um, so yeah, the, I used the five for churning stuff like that, um, keychains and things like that. And now the seven has turned into a dedicated rotary laser. So if we go back to, if you were with us at the beginning of the live stream, I started here in my craft room, but now I, I'm actually in a facility. I have a warehouse where I am learning how to scale a business because that's part of, that's one of the things that I'm passionate about with my followers. Um, those of them that really approach laser engraving more for business purposes, they want to you know, stay home. A lot of them are, are moms like me that wanted to stay home with their kids. So a lot of my journey is learning how to scale a business and balance a business so that you can be all the things you want to be. You want to be a mom, a wife, you know, a friend and not, not just be somebody who works all day long, you know? Yeah, um, right. And I just want to mention too, that um, if you want to learn uh, some good tips about marketing, you can go over to the Lightburn channel and look at the LBX videos, I believe, I mm -hmm. think so anyway. And uh, Emily gave a talk on marketing there that was really interesting. So, and uh, we did also a pencil jig uh, live stream, I guess it was oh, earlier yeah. in the year or last year, at the end of last year. And, uh, you know, I supply all of my grandkids with, with their pencils. See, so, that's uh, a nice thing to Jeff, do. Yeah. What do so your Jeff, grandkids call you? Uh, grandpa. <laughs> that's a good grandpa. <laughs> yeah. None so, are dying. Uh, I have had so many people ask me to get in the diode market, but there's so, I only have so much time. I would love to. Actually, I have I have one hidden under my desk here. I don't know if I should show <laughs> it to you guys. And it's sitting there waiting for me to get to it. I just I just haven't had a chance. Mom's so, um, <laughs> my uh mike is uh got a, a cute comment there what size laser do i need to put now you know why it says stumbling bumbling idiot right <laughs> just kidding mike <laughs> oh he's wanting to put a, sh a laser on the shark's head yes <laughs> okay i'm sorry what size laser? i'm sorry i missed the question i, I, no, I was, was, it was just it was just a joke question oh, okay you know it's funny uh, you put it up on the screen but i was searching through the comments trying to find it that's okay that's okay um v is said that she only sold um one set of 10 and she's not as good as marketing v go watch go watch her um her video 
and she talks all about it. Can so, I and, can I make a, a quick comment there though? Yeah, sure. Huh? For me, much of your success is going to depend on your mindset. So I don't want you to say I'm not good at marketing. I prefer yeah. you say I'm not as good at marketing yet. You think I wasn't good at marketing? I yeah. didn't even know how to use YouTube or Instagram. Okay. But I learned and I got better. So what I would ask myself is I would look at your photos. Is there a way that you can stage your photos to, because photos sell, you know, can you make it more realistic? Like I'll, I'll get my kids and I'll ask them to hold the pencil so that somebody who's shopping, they see a child's hand holding the pencil. Yeah. You know, yeah. they can see their child's hand holding the pencil. So that's well, just the, the, the photos that you the photos that you use is one of the most important things is th those photos and i suggest that you concentrate on photos and description people used to ask me i did a video about two and a half years ago on slate coasters and uh back then i was selling on the weekend on facebook marketplace and i just got more orders than i could ever handle selling them at 80 dollars a set for eight coasters and everybody said oh it's impossible to get 80 dollars a set but if you actually read my description and saw the photographs that i took and i cropped out the background i put different backgrounds on there like tables and flowers and things where where they really stood out and took photos from every angle and i talked about the slate where i got it from how it was handmade in louisiana if you have the right description and you have the right photographs and plenty of them you know that's what marketing is all about you have to sell yourself your skill and your product all at the same time in order to uh, actually make sales and there is patrick's emily i had a question for you yep, sure. the, eon, the eon lasers they have the hybrid stepper motors right uh, I'll, I'll wait till the show <laughs> i see uh, my, that look on her face my cheap chinese laser there has hybrid steppers because i put them on that laser well that is that is something that not everybody can do nope yeah i've done so, some upgrades to it so it, it functions it's it's not the greatest larry larry is saying that uh he's made over 100 coasters and they're hard uh to sell for me well i did a video on marketing if you go to my channel and uh search for the word marketing you'll find that video there and i actually show you the ad that i used on facebook and I can tell you back then, now Facebook has changed since then, but back then, um, you know, it would post right away and it would go out to everybody. Nowadays, you got to pay for your ads to go out. But uh, I had to take my ad down after three or four hours. I would put the ad up on a Friday night and I would run out of product. I'd have a whole case, you know, a whole box of uh, coasters that just come in from Texas, black slate coasters. And I'd have to take that ad down after three or four hours because I had so many messenger messages, people that wanted to order. And I would send them to like a web page where they could pick out a style. And they were all monogram coasters. And uh, like I said earlier, you have to have the right description. You have to have the right photographs and you have to sell you, yourself, your product. And it has to be something that people look at and go, oh, wow, that's beautiful. It has to be beautiful photographs. That's why Daddy. I like to put myself in all of my marketing photos. Exactly. So Joe yeah. is saying thanks for the Patriot <laughs> Design link. Uh, Patriot Design Designs, if you sign up for their newsletter over there, you will see that um, probably like once a month, right, Patrick? You, you, we get an email that says, uh, here's a couple of free files for you. Yeah. You know? And then they have a subscription service so you right. can pay so much a month and get so many downloads from their catalog and yep. they recently changed it so if you don't use all those downloads in one month they roll over to the next month so you're not exactly. losing out any of your credits or and for, grabbing stuff and that you don't 20, really want and for 20 bucks they'll do custom tracing for you and they do a really nice job larry this all go this comment goes back to what i was saying earlier there, there's no such thing as too many people making them so yeah, there's a lot of people that make different things, but uh, the people that are selling are, like I said, they're selling themselves. They're selling the locally made. 
they're mm -hmm. selling the description and they're selling the high quality uh, photographs. So if you've got that combination of things, you're going to sell no matter where you're posting. I can go on Etsy and look around on Etsy. And th I do that a lot because I look at pricing and I look at what people are making. And I can find something like, uh, for instance, Nick from Bill Dad Bill. He's got nice pictures of his keychains. He's got a nice description, you know, and then you can find somebody else that's $2 cheaper. But I wouldn't buy from that person that's $2, $2 cheaper because the ad just didn't appeal to me. Mm -hmm. So I see thousands and thousands of ads on, on Etsy and a, a pretty big majority of them are non-descriptive with just one photo or two, you know. Uh, yeah. being, being the cheapest isn't the best way to get more sales. Exactly. And, and uh, the, pre Greg, the whole presentation. Actually, so you know, Greg, another, another good technique that I do a lot. Um, I, I personally, I like to price my stuff a little higher, but yes, absolutely. really what I'll do is I'll, t I'll ask myself, okay, what, what do I want to make on this product? Like, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to make less than X dollars. So I will price it a little higher. And then discount it so that it looks like it's on sale. Etsy will mm -hmm. boost it because it's on sale, and people will feel like they're getting a deal. Um, exactly. So that's another trick or yeah. strategy, you know. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And uh, Greg is saying uh, is asking, can I use my JPEG uh, graphic and Lightburn? Yeah, you just do a file import, mm -hmm. and uh, you can either use the JPEG in uh, image mode, or you can, on many of them, you can trace it. It depends on what you want to do with it too, because I use I transfer it into a PNG a lot, and it's a lot better for doing photos. It's a lot better. Yeah, and this this is actually really not true, Larry. You get what you pay for because, uh, like with me, there were local people on on Facebook that were selling slate coasters just like I was making, and they were half the price. So you get what the person perceives the perceived value when they're looking yeah. at your ad, when they're reading your description, when they're looking at your photographs, they get a perceived value in their head. And when they see your $80, it's like, yeah, I guess this is worth $80. <laughs> so it, it's all about perception. It really is. Uh, let's see. Let's go. Let's go to the comments for a while. And then uh, what I'm going to do uh, after we're finished with the comments I'm going to show you this file that I cut out earlier for a Kleenex box, and I think you all are going to love it. So this is the front right here, and then I've got this New Orleans uh, Fleur de Lis design all the way around. And this file is uh, going to be free to download with a couple of my other files, like I said earlier, that are already listed on the lasermakersrealm.com. Under the video, you'll see the download. Also on my channel, the zip download is also available there. That's my air conditioner make noise, making noise. I might have to go turn that off. But anyway, uh, I'm going to assemble this in just a minute. And uh, we're going to go back and take a look at what's happening in uh, Patrick's world. Oh, Jeremy's world. No, let's go to Patrick's world. <laughs> <laughs> I've already got one of your tea boxes. I'm doing another one right now. Okay, cool. But this time I'm in focus. I reset it up and drop my power. Jerry does that a lot. <laughs> he doesn't go in focus. I have focus. too many hobbies and I'm very forgetful. Yeah. yeah. But you did my uh, Eiffel Tower, the 3D Eiffel Tower pretty yeah, good. Yeah, that came out perfect. Yep. You know, I will I will say here, so the, the clack shack, you know, um, they say um, sometimes your brand ad value adds value to a product. Ask John Deere. I couldn't agree more. One of the things that kind of blew me away um, at, at about two years into my laser journey is where I really had to like pivot because I was I was drowning in making physical product and teaching and doing all the other stuff. So I had to let something go and I chose to, to let selling products go. And it got to a point where people kept messaging me and I would tell them, I, you know, I wish I could make this product for you, but I am too busy, but I would love to refer you to someone. And people were reluctant. They would tell me, no, Emily, yeah. I want to buy it from you. And that's yeah. when I started to understand the value of branding because they could, they could get the same thing. It's just a pencil. If it was, you know, yeah. they could get a pencil yeah. engraved from some, somebody else, but they yeah. wanted it from me. 
So well, I made uh, I, I most of the stuff I make is gifts. And mm -hmm. I made one of uh, one of these. Actually, I made three more for somebody that was a relative. And uh, I have my brand on the back of the box. And I made theirs without the brand on the box. <laughs> and uh, they said, oh, we wanted to see we wanted to have your brand on the back of the your logo on the back of the box. And I was like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, yeah, that's that's absolutely true. You're like yeah. a YouTube movie star and people want, you know, things directly from you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, Jeremy has gotten started. He is running a uh, photograph on uh, stainless. Is that stainless, Jeremy? No, it's just my uh, cold rolled steel that I use. Oh, that's right. Yeah, the cold rolled steel. Yep. Yeah, so I, I can do Jeremy it on stainless. Is... I just don't have any. Yeah. So Jeremy has started his project. Patrick has got his project going and I'm going to excuse me, set up my camera over here so that I can show you mine and how I assemble it, which kind of makes some people a little nervous. But, um, yeah, let me switch over to a different camera. Yeah, Emily, I used a 60-watt fiber laser about three months ago, and, yeah, there's plenty to learn. <laughs> Lots that to piece learn. of – sorry, Jerry. That piece of wood is 31 inches wide, and that is uh, eight inches, well, seven and a half inches uh, tall. In that what kind of wood are you using, Patrick? It's it's very popular. It's poplar. Poplar. Oh, nice. <laughs> very popular. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> okay, so uh, this is one of the projects um, that you'll be getting, and this is the tea light. And this is an older version uh, that I did a few years ago. So it's like a regular box. Mm -hmm. And in the light burn file, you'll see a link to these tea lights that I use that are very, very cheap. Uh, you get a whole bunch of them for a small amount of money. And this is the actual one that I just cut out right before the live stream on the Lasermatic. So uh, here's the back. And then here's one side. And here is the front side. This is what everybody really loves. The bless you. I like I that bottle opener, this... Rich. The what? <clears throat> I like your bottle opener. <laughs> the burn to learn <laughs> leather bottle <Yep>. opener. <laughs> and then this is the other side. So the only thing you have to be careful with when you do this is you have to remember where, where all your sides are. And trust me, folks, I have done this wrong. So I take my two sides and I put them out here and then I have my front and my back and I try and orient it in the right orientation. So there's the front and there the back, there's the back. And I can't tell you how many of these that, that I've screwed up, probably at least six or seven. And I've made dozens of these. So I take the side, make sure that the bottom is over here. Then I take the front and make sure that the bottom is in the same orientation. And this is where some people sort of cringe here comes but the pain. This is a smaller wood today. So <laughs> normally uh, for the, <laughs> here it is. <laughs> hey, there it is. But uh, normally I, I have to, uh, this wood is a little smaller than usual, but this is designed, the file is designed for uh, three millimeter nominal. So that goes from like 2.7 up to about 3.2. And this one, I think, is on the low side, and I guess that's why it's fitting together uh, easily. So I would have to glue this one. But let's see how the other side fits. They're probably all going to fit the same. They're going to just drop right in. Yeah, so I'm going to have to wind up actually gluing this one. But just to give Emily, you an something, idea. Something to know about Rich is that he only <laughs> uses one tool, and that tool is a hammer. Okay. On everything. I was in trouble. I was like, wait, what did I do? No, no it's, just, it's just the joke. Rich uses a hammer on everything. Well, let me tell so, you, I was, I was, I got my mallet right here because the, uh, the base on my, you know, this thing is, the scariest thing about the tail was figuring out how to get it to stand and be sturdy, you know, because it's so heavy. And I don't know if I can move it back a little bit more so you guys can see better. Hold on. This is my dog Woody, by the way. If anybody doesn't hey, Woody. know him. Woody Woody. Woody. But, <laughs> <laughs> so the you know, because it's curved, 
it's kind of unbalanced. Right. And so I had to make sure that I had like the tightest fit here. I don't know if you guys can see. Ah, I'm gonna knock down everything. Hold on, this way. That is huge. See? Oh yeah. Wow. That's Fair how enough. I was able to get this thing to stand. And, you know, there's little kids running around it, so I was terrified. Wow. Made it work. So I'm with you, Rich. Nice. You're very important. <laughs> I, nice I did a big I did a big one last year. I think I sent Patrick a, a photograph of it uh, for my friend's daughter's quinceanera. And uh, it, I think it was four feet tall and uh, 34 inches wide. And it came out really cool. But what I forgot to do was the top. So I'm going to have to uh, I'm going to have to switch over and actually cut out that file for the top. I only did the four sides. Now, this one, unfortunately, the wood is smaller than i thought it was let me check it with my uh with my gauge here here's the tea light here i got together it all tapped and, together but i have to glue the top four corners where they won't lock and that is the problem so uh this is 2.6 millimeter um when i should have used together fine did you have to I use a hammer i used a paint stir stick because i couldn't find my rubber mallet I got a paint stir. Oh, uh, that was the he he has risen. Yeah, that one that one cuts out perfectly for three millimeter wood. You need to hammer that one side. <laughs> yeah, they're all hammered in. It's just these top four corners. I got to put a little hot glue on. I, I, I would I would like to see you hit that with a hammer and hammer those in. <laughs> no, I tap. I had to tap one of them in. I pressed them on, on my wooden countertop and last time I tapped it in with a stir stick. Oh well, I prefer using a hammer myself. Yeah. But let me uh, get the light burn file set up over here and get these off. And let me show you what I'm doing real quick, too. Um, this is the actual uh, file that you're going to get, or one of the files, I should say. And all of these are docked together, so it all cuts out perfectly, and you have very, very little waste. So all, I forgot to do this part right here. So I'm just going to uh, take this off the work bed, and I'm going to bring this one in and dock it up in the top left corner. And I'm just going to go run this job real quickly. And now, Rich, then, Rich, can I ask you yeah. a quick thing about your file? Yeah. So in that, do you, I'm assuming you do, you remove the overlapping lines? Yes, absolutely. In light burn, yeah. Do you tell them that in the instructions? I'm just curious. Uh, no, but when I did the video on, on making this, I did put that in there. Make sure that you do the, your optimized settings. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Just curious. But, uh, I didn't put it in the project notes in, in this file, just so I, I just want to show you real quickly, uh, in here, when you open the file, you're going to get some project notes in here. Mm -hmm. So, uh, there are, th it's going to, uh, tell you it was designed for three millimeter wood. There's a link right here to the video tutorial that you can copy. There's supply links here for the uh, for the wood that I use, <clears throat> and I'm not using the normal wood I normally use. And there's also a link to the Kleenex uh, boxes on Amazon. And this project, this. <laughs> and this project, by the way, <clears throat> cost me two dollars and twenty one cents, and that two dollars and twenty one cents includes the Kleenex. <laughs> so these can sell if you're like doing uh, craft shows or craft fairs or whatever, you know, whatever the case may be, you can sell these for $20 a piece and they will sell all day long. <laughs> One of my uh, patrons took that file from last year and uh, he, that's all he does is craft shows. He does the same craft show every week in Washington. And uh, he took that file and he said, Oh, no way it can sell for $20. And he only brought 10 of them with him and sold all 10 out the first day. No way. Then brought, yeah. Then he brought 20 the next week, sold all 20 of those. And, I, and you know, he just, that's all he could do because he's, you know, elderly, retired and, and so forth. And he didn't want to spend too much time working. It's just a right. hobby for him. But that's he sells about 20 to 25 of these things a week at that uh, craft show. That's an awesome. <laughs> Yeah, so let me go over to the uh, lasermatic, and I'm going to load another piece of wood on there and uh, run this job really quickly. I will be right back. Uh, can can I catch up on some of the questions in the comments? Is that okay? Sure. Absolutely. 
Go right Absolutely. ahead. Do whatever Go right you want. Ahead. You don't have to ask. Okay. Well, I don't know. I'm new here, you know. <laughs> um, if somebody's talking and you've got something more important to say, talk over them and then they'll be quiet. Okay. Just elbow them. Just get out of the way. <laughs> Okay. Um, Jim, this goes back though, because I kind of scrolled up to see if I had missed anybody. Jim was asking, uh, do you have any videos on marketing and how to start a business? I have a really good one that's pinned to the top of my channel um, called how to pay off your laser in 90 days, um, because I really wanted to help people do that. So in that video, I give a lot of advice on how to start a business and what to keep in mind and, and how to you know make a logo and all that stuff so in addition to the lbx tr talk that i did that rich was talking about that's another really good video and then, yes and I, I watched that video too and it was great thank you all right so uh, i've got mine I did it so I've got mine on the uh laser bed i just dropped a piece of wood in there and i'm just going to go ahead and hit uh, start <laughs> on the laser and we'll get that that job running and then we'll come back patrick how's yours how's your job coming you're good about halfway done about halfway done yep. and uh jeremy where are you at oh we are about there looking nice oh look at that this That's is uh, my live stream that i did a little while ago this is where um i did a bunch of bing designer photos and uh Picked one of my favorite Last Supper ones that it came up with, and that's what I'm doing. That is nice. Oh, you know what, Jeremy? Remind me later. Send me a text. Um, okay. I've got I've got a Last Supper that I think you're gonna like. In fact, let me go uh, get one that I made. Oh no, I'm dinging. I'm going to come back and do a project with you guys because now I'm feeling like. Feel like <laughs> You're welcome anytime, Emily. You know what I'll so, do? Uh, I really want to take. I, so I made these little. Um, it's funny. I made a smaller version of my mermaid to put on the table for table decor. And I totally forgot. Oh, that's cool. I like that. But I want to take this and make it into a piggy bank. Maybe oh, can, yeah. Maybe I can make that with, with you guys once I have the file ready. That'd be fun. Napkin, have a napkin holder. Have two of those back to back. Jeremy, let me show you what um, what I did for the. Well, I don't know if I can get this on screen or not, but this is the the one that I did, and I, I can get a little closer here where you can see it. This oh, is like nice. three dimensional. Came out nice. Uh, yeah, so I, remind me later. Send me a text, and I'll send you the, uh, the image that I used. So this is uh, thirty six inches wide, I believe. And uh, unfortunately, if you look uh, over here, you can see that line going up there. Unfortunately, this was in the flood of a couple of weeks ago. Oh, wow. And, and it yeah, got wow. ruined. So, so, so it's I'm vintage. Gonna, yeah. I'm going to redo it, though. I'm going to redo this one <laughs> on the Lasermatic. And, and, of course, this is uh, some really cheap wood. So this is uh, Luan from yep. Lowe's. You and Next, do uh, do a Noah's Ark. That way, if it's in the flood, it'll have a <laughs> really nice look to it. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Did you say you that was that, You, you got to do that yeah, last damn. little hippo running to get on the Ark, too. It looks great. Yeah, that's some really cheap Luan that I got from uh, Lowe's. I, most people don't realize it, but if you make friends with the manager at these big box stores mm -hmm. uh, and get there early when, whenever they open, like seven o'clock in the morning, and there'll be like a big crowd of people over in a corner somewhere and the manager will be there talking to them and wait for, you know, just kind of hang around and walk around and wait for that meeting to break up. They all have these morning meetings and go and grab that manager and make friends with them because they will do all kinds of things for you. That Luan I got in uh, five by 10 sheets for like $11 from Lowe's. They, they special ordered it for me and they ordered me, I think four or five sheets of it. And I cut it down on the table saw and then I cut it out with the laser. I engraved it first, obviously. Yeah. Um, laser of love creations. I have a 60 watt Mopa uh, fiber laser and I'm running a 175 lens on it right now. 
and I don't do any photo editing or anything other than in Lightburn. Yes, that's the best place to do all of your photo editing. Now, people don't, people don't realize that Lightburn is a series of programs that are put together, open source programs that are put together in a closed source program. And uh, their image adjusting is uh, you can do everything that you can do like uh, in GIMP or, you know, most other uh, image programs if you learn to do it. Yeah, there are there have been a few occasions where I've needed to run it into Photoshop. Um, like I had a, a Vietnam vet yeah. that had pictures that were taken in Vietnam in 1967 that I scanned right. into my computer and I had to go in and use that to enhance it and get it so I could read it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, then sometimes I will go into a photo program too. Like when part of my other business is doing tombstones for uh, pet cemeteries. And uh, I say my other business, I gave that to the manager back in January as a Christmas present. So she, she owns the business now technically. And uh, I just get a little retirement check from it. But uh, we do tombstones and sometimes you'll get a pet that uh, where the eyes aren't right or something like that, where you actually have to go in and mess them out, you know, yep. and, and change some things on it. And you may have to change some highlights here and there. You know, people are very particular about, uh, you know, a granite tombstone with a photograph of their pet on it. So when you're talking about something like that, where you're masking things out and changing contrast within the, ma the mask and gamma and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, there are times where I do use, I use Zara, uh, Corel program called uh, Zara Photo Editor, I believe it's called. And it has just an incredible amount of features that you pay for one time and you get a lifetime subscription. And it's only like $29. So, I had a picture. Uh, uh, Jay Steffens asked, um, uh, put that up. Have any pictures? Yes, I have a few videos on my youtube channel that i go over settings and how i do uh do things and i'm planning on doing another one with a little bit more in depth um i'm still getting used to doing this kind of stuff on camera and explaining it so i'm planning on going into another one I have so, a um, for those people that don't that don't know uh jeremy's channel it's on the bottom of the screen right now it is youtube.com slash at htl dash customs so if you haven't gone over there and subscribed yet, uh, please help support the, the LMR and go over there and subscribe to um, Jeremy's channel. Jeremy is a very creative person that's really good with a fiber laser, and he's uh, just now getting into the uh, diode lasers. So uh, we're glad to have uh, Jeremy as a regular uh, host now of the LMR. Yeah, 30 years as a licensed builder and a woodworker, and I had wood envy from you guys and your diodes, so now I can do it now. <laughs> <laughs> I've got and a couple Jer of photo, photo videos uh, floating around on my channel, too. Yep. I have, I, a picture, I, I have a picture of my mom and dad, and they're married 1942 in the hallway. I took it out of the frame. I scanned it. I want to get a depth map done on it so I can put on a brass coin on my fiber laser and then put their when they were married, you know, when they're born and when they passed away, give make one for my brother and sister also. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Photo engraving is not my jam. Uh, but lately, in my little corner of the laser internet, um, I see a lot of people talking about imager. Do you, I haven't heard you guys mention that at all. What are Imagar. your opinions? So imager is a, um, it's a program. Mm -hmm. And it does automatic. Now, if if you have no understanding of um, lasers, laser editing whatsoever, I do have a, a, a tutorial on my channel. If you search for the word Veronica, so I did the veil of Veronica, and I went through the image adjustments and how to save that adjustment for that type of image, and I even talked about external software as well, and. But ImageR is great for people that don't want to get involved with any of that. The only thing is you have to look for the right mode. So uh, you have to pick the right mode, the right laser, all that kind of stuff. Um, I don't usually recommend anything outside of Lightburn because I do 90% of my editing in Lightburn. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. but um, for when I do, I only use the Corel Zara, and I once in a while will go over to ImageR and test some of their uh, settings over there, but I never seem to get uh, great settings because they're all pre-programmed, and mm -hmm. they're assuming a certain type of wood or slate or whatever it is that you're engraving on, and uh, you have to do a lot of testing to find the right settings for the type of material that you're using at the time. So uh, I tend to save my settings. I use the software that's built into Lightburn. I adjust the image in there, and then yeah. I save that setting with a file name that uh, for that particular material and that particular style of um, image. And I have probably 40 or 50 saved settings in, in my uh, Lightburn software. All right. Thank you. I was just curious. Oh, and it looks like it looks like Jerry got the right settings. <laughs> yeah, that piece hopped out. Look at that. Yep, a couple of them. <clears throat> Tell Jerry oh, that the screw I, and then I switched can. right into switch, Jeremy. About halfway <laughs> out. I didn't, can we go look at that? I didn't know I had a screw coming out. I'm getting old. So that's one reason. Tell Jerry that the screw on the end of the gantry is working loose. It's about to fall out and needs tightening. Thank you. I see that. Thank you very much. <laughs> huh. on camera very observant. On. That was cool. We got eagle eyes in the comments. Richard, thank you. Uh, v says that Photoshop used to be her favorite um, editor, but and let me see. Hang on a second. When she started using Lightburn. And I don't remember. Is V a man or a woman? I don't want to say he or she. <laughs> I'll say V. I always get it wrong, though, whatever I do. But <laughs> when V started using Lightburn, it bumped to the top of these favorites. <laughs> Patrick, he or she? Yes. <laughs> I don't know why I get that wrong every time. She. 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 Okay, so I had it right she. the first time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was talking to a person on the phone a long time ago, and I got it wrong, and they sure let me know about it, so I don't say he or she when I say thank you. <laughs> I think okay. every Who time had... you address one of V's comments, you always get it wrong. <laughs> I, yeah, okay. Uh, Pop-Pop's asking who had the mom project showing earlier. That was me. That was uh, Jeremy. And that's the reason you should subscribe to his, his channel. <laughs> I got a question for Emily. Yeah. On your on your lasers, do you exhaust you don't exhaust anything outside? You capture everything with a charcoal filter and et cetera, et cetera. And how fast do they clog up and are they real expensive and et cetera, et cetera? All those things, my friends. Yeah. So I used to vent right out the window here in my house, but when I when I was shopping for a space two years ago, it was really hard to find something that was within my budget. Uh, and finally, when I did, it didn't have, you know, windows to, to vent out of. It's just like one big garage door and then an office with the door. Um, so yeah, that's when I ended up looking into fume extractors and ended up getting uh, um, the filter boxes that I have. So here's what I would say. If you cut MDF, do not get a do not get a fume extractor. It's gonna be it's gonna yeah. it's too tough on the charcoal filter. Um, yeah. But or if, if you're you, doing painted surfaces and things like that, yeah, yeah, no way. It's too tough on it. Um, if you do, if you cut acrylic, it's not gonna be as expensive at all. Like I have a one of my my moderators in uh, my uh, Facebook group, Kathy. She runs all of her. She is. I've lost track. This woman has like, I don't know, eight lasers, I don't know. And she vents them with, with fume extractors, but she primarily cuts acrylic. So she only has to change her filters out once a year, right? Acrylic's very clean. Right. Let me interrupt right. real quick. Rich, you got your, uh, are you sucking the smoke out of there or what's what's up with that? An awful lot of smoke yeah. there. Yeah, that smoke is being sucked out. That, go, that goes outside. So that's that's yeah. going out the back and uh, outside. Thank you, Moses. Sorry, Emily. Uh, go ahead. Twenty dollars super sticker. Really appreciate it. And uh, Greg is saying, "How did I do the last supper on the lasermatic?" 
Okay, I actually did it on a on the Nej um, Max Three, so uh, which which was a, a huge size, and I extended that. I extended the um, I think the rails on that. I used to have a K40 a couple of years ago, and they can only do eight inches by a twelve inches, so that didn't last long. And one of these days, I'll get something big and put out in the garage or my shop. I call it. Okay, so. Um, uh adventures with ej is asking for a link for the lasermatic the best place to get that is going to be i'm going to put it in the uh in the comments uh, i don't have the lmr link i have my link sorry about that but that is the best place to get it that is the roly automation uh, website i can give you my link too and then you can pick one <laughs> yeah um, <laughs> Let's see. Bait Warzone is saying, I have a question. If you sell the files on uh, Etsy, how do you upload different types? I use, okay. Uh, in Lightburn, you just do file export and uh, you can save them as SVGs, AIs, whatever you want. You can do it that way or you can just save it as a Lightburn file uh, or you can save it as as all, whatever you want. Lightburn is very versatile when it comes to that. Uh, Moses is saying, thank you for looking at my design. It came out great. Um, well, that's good to hear, Moses. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate that. How do you upload different types like Adobe Illustrator? Uh, you have to put them all in. If you're talking about uploading them to uh, like Etsy or something like that, I just put everything into a zip file and and that's it. Uh, I had that site, but thought there was an actual manual. Uh, if you're talking about the lasermatic, the lasermatic comes through. Oh, Lightburn. There, yeah, there I posted is the link to the online okay, cool. doc. Yeah, they have a very extensive manual there. Let me go get my piece off of the uh, lasermatic. All right. While you're doing that, I'm going to answer a question. Tennessee Wood Signs. I gotta get my camera right. This is a reversed image in Lightburn. Only do that when I use black paint uh, and la layered paints. So right now I'm just running it standard on the on the raw steel to get the black. So you only want to inverse that when you want to take the black off and leave some of the black on. Yeah, if you think uh, black business cards. The anodized business cards. If you're yep. wanting to remove the black, then you run a negative. Yep. And guys, I wanted to show you a, a trick. Uh, if you get your settings right, you're not going to have soot and debris. But this is just a, a tip for those people out there. Get yourself a paintbrush. Don't touch the engraving at all. And maybe you'll be able to see the dust come off. Watch. Maybe not. But there's uh, some dust coming off of here now. And if you don't touch it, and, you know, the oils of your finger will actually stain that soot into the uh, file. But if you have your settings right, it's it's going to come out absolutely beautiful, the engraving. And this is the top of this piece here. And I wish this would have, I wish I could have used my hammer. I'm, I'm kind of upset that I that my hammer was, wasn't uh, being able to. I'm going to use it anyway. You got, you got a rubber mallet, be better. <laughs> No rubber mallets. Get a man-sized hammer like this one. So there we go. Uh, the top fit perfectly. The side. This one could use a little bit of glue, but this is the whole box right here. It just needs, so, it just needs more hammering. That's all. It just needs some more hammering, and it's gonna be, yeah. It's gonna be perfect. And then what you do, <clears throat> and in the file there'll be links for this too. You take your Kleenex box. You pop this hole out right here, and this fits right over the top. And I have it designed in a way where uh, it's a suction fit. See that? It's a suction fit. So this is designed with almost no tolerance here. And when you pick this up, the box of Kleenex will not come out. To get it out, all you have to do is pick up and push down on it, and then you can pull it out the bottom. But the way it's designed right now... The suction fit is perfect just the way it is. People absolutely 
love these Kleenex boxes. So uh, go download the files, make yourself one. This one, I had a little bit smaller wood, so I'm going to have to glue this one together. But there is your, bless you, Kleenex box with a little bit of a New Orleans feel to it. Hope you guys like it. Very and cool. I, I like get, it. I get to use, I'm just going to hammer it just a little bit more. <laughs> Even though it doesn't need it. I love my hammers. <laughs> So, uh, oh, let's go back to um, let's go back to Jeremy's because his is getting close. Wow, look at how beautiful that is! It's I got a futuristic Tron Legacy blueprint kind of look to it. I like it. That really, really looks nice. Viking Wind, are you, when you say laser film, are you talking about like mylar, like stencil material? Do you do you know, Rich? I, I think what he's talking about with the laser film might be the um, masking tape. Oh, well, Jeremy, I, don't, I don't know. Jeremy, which lens are you using? Uh, this is my one seventy five lens. Okay, it's a hundred millimeters a second with all the other settings that I have. If I I've tried everything under the sun, and this one gets the best results. So that's why it takes forever. I I agree, Cindy. Thank you, Cindy. Okay, yes, he was talking about like stencil material. You can. Um, I actually I, I just made so by the way, guys, this is this is birthday party three. I've done three birthday parties in four weeks because all my kids' birthdays are right. <laughs> and so for my my oldest son, he wanted he's so cute. He wanted a, a America birthday party and he wanted his he wanted to have a, like cookies of the US Capitol and the White House and you can't find cookie stencils like that, so I had to make some with my. Yeah. Life, what I use the ten the um, I have it linked in my. If you go to that mom with a laser co, I have it on Amazon. You can find find some. Ernie's got a good question. Go What's the best way to get the burnt smell off of leather projects? Mm -hmm. Take it outside for a week and a half. I rinse mine with water and then yeah, let it set for for a week. I I love my I love my vinegar, so that that's my favorite thing to use is uh, is vinegar. And I don't use like regular household vinegar. I buy cleaning vinegar. In fact, I just bought ninety nine percent vinegar. Don't do that because that will kill you. You can't even work with it. But uh, I just take a, a few drops of that ninety nine percent to make it go a long way, and I add about three cups of water, and that takes the smell out of anything. It doesn't matter what it is. You know, I, I mean, I don't know. I don't hear any in the background. Do any of you run them with uh, compressors? Uh, I've run my yes. CO2. Yeah. Patrick and I both run compressors on the CO2s. Yeah. With, yep. my, with my stuff on the CO2, when I use the compressor, I feel like I don't really have, you know, after, after smell or... I don't know. It, it smells a lot nicer with the compressor. So yes, it does. Yeah, because you have more air. Uh, Edward is saying <clears throat> suggestions on how to speed up a burn project. Yeah. So on the uh, laser tab, you're going to go into your optimization settings. And uh, I really can't explain all of this like in here on the live stream. But uh, if you go into your optimization settings, you can change some of your settings in there. And also on your layers, you can do fill groups together. You can do, uh, you know, uh, fill shapes individually. So and then you can look at the preview and you can get um, so an idea from there. True Tech is talking about ozone generator. I actually have one here in the shop uh, before before. And I think it was like thirty nine bucks on Amazon. And uh, before I leave for the night. I just turn that on the timer for one hour. And when I come back the next day, there's not uh, a trace of smell in here whatsoever. And every day when I leave, there's always a, a big Back when I was in my 20s, I sold those with another guy. They're made by a company called Alpine, and they were extremely expensive. And I'm sure a lot of people yeah. in chat remember those. Yeah, well, now the days of Amazon, nothing's extremely expensive. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. AliExpress, Timu. Rich, just quickly, um, Edward told us he's in Orlando. We're going to be at the ISA show 
April yes, 10th to the 12th. If you want to head out to the show, come see us. Yeah, and you can meet uh, all of us there. Me and Patrick will be there as well. Um, Tim, I, I don't know if you noticed on uh, my machine, and you probably can't see it if I switch over to it here, but uh, it looks dirty again. But I just cleaned mine with the pressure washer, and it, it was you know very, very quick and very easy. Do you use hot water or just regular cold water? Let me switch over and see. Maybe you can see it. You can see the part that I cleaned there anyway. It's it's, it's gotten dirty again. I just use the uh, pressure washer, and there is a product called um, Dawn Professional. Power Wash. That, uh, Dawn, Dawn Power, Power Wash. Wash. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and that, uh, that works really, really well. Just spray it down, let it sit for a couple yep. minutes. I cleaned I mine get yesterday with break. I cleaned mine yesterday with brake parts cleaner and paint thinner, and it worked great. Yeah. I so, wasn't uh, going to get out the pressure washer, so I used Dawn Power Wash, set it in the shower, let that sit for a little bit, and then yeah. rinse it off with a spray handle, and that by itself did a great job. I'm not yeah, doing so what I did again, though. While we talked about ozone generators, I don't want anybody to run out and get an ozone generator and not know that you cannot be in the same room as it. So. Uh, mine even came with a little door tag that said, warning, do not enter, that you hang on the door when you leave, just to remind me in case I come back out to the shop. The uh, ozone generator will, is very bad for you if you have to wait until the morning. And then when I get here in the morning, I open the, the roll-up door and uh, and I let the place air out a little bit. Uh, Emily lost Emily, her camera. How do we help her with her camera? Um, click on settings, Emily, and settings. choose your camera. Or you can leave and come back, and that should that should yeah. do the trick. Unplug <laughs> it and plug it in if it's a USB. This box over here don't work very well anymore. So the show, the ISA convention is dishes. The IS, okay, who's doing that? The ISA oh, convention I mean. is going to be in Orlando 10, 11, and 12 <laughs> of April. Uh, come and see us. We will be at the Eon booth on Wednesday, and we'll be all around the show for the rest of the time. Emily will be there at the Eon booth all the time. I will, um, and I'm, I'm also doing a talk. They're going to have, like, different sessions. I don't know which day, but I'll be doing a business talk, too. Yeah, come see us. You're not too far. Yeah, uh, it's it's good for everybody. Um I just double clicked on something and went full screen. Oh, there we go. It, it's a good show for everybody that's with lasers because you get to see what's happening in the world of lasers. There's going to be a ton of laser manufacturers there. So uh, come see us. Um, yeah, like I like I said, yeah, you really you can't be in the room and you need to air out the room after you're done uh, ozone cleaning. I just wanted to say thank you. There was someone here who said that they really loved the, um, I have a tutorial where I show how to do the ombre effect, but I just missed the person. I just saw them. It's like etchworks or something. Uh, I don't see it in the comments. All right. Well, thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed it. If anybody's curious <laughs> how to spray paint like this, can I link it in the chat? Is that okay? Sure. Of course. I have yeah, a video to show the technique. Yep, and I am also going to put up uh, Emily's banner. Well, you have to again. Put it in private chat, Rich, and you'll have to share it. Yeah, oh, that's true. Yeah, Emily, uh, click on private chat and send it to me. Yes. Or send it in the private chat. Oh, okay, cool. There you go. Hey, if anybody's bored tomorrow afternoon around, well, evening around 5, I'm showing uh, my rotary table jig for business cards and wallets. I'm just going to be messing around with that doing some business cards. Just thought I'd throw that in there if anybody's bored wants to watch something tomorrow evening. I might join you because I have one that I made that I got to get some business cards done. I might need some input. Yeah, I wanted to get some cards done for the ISA show. Nice. Yeah, I'm going to get my... I'm not going to use my wood coins for the ISA show. I'm going to uh, do the uh, aluminium business cards. <laughs> Aluminium. I say that the right way. Aluminium. <laughs> yep. Space metal. Almost done. I'm running that at 800 millimeters. 
a minute. And let's see, line spacing of 0.45. And like 85% power on this 90 watt tube. Uh, Viking wind is saying that I should take my business coins to the ISA. The the whole problem is that uh, I can run off my business cards. I can run off a hundred of them in in a few minutes on the fiber laser, and uh, as as opposed to uh, doing it on the uh, on the diode or the CO two, it's just so much faster. That uh, I, you know what I will bring one for you if you show up. <laughs> One that's special really coming form. out. That's really coming out nice. Jerry, what are you doing over there? He's cleaning his machine. Oh, okay. I was wondering what was going on there. I saw him wiping stuff down. Mine's getting real close. Yeah. So I see we still have 250 people with us right now. Um, I want to awesome. thank you all. Thank you all so much to the viewers. Uh, we've been getting between 250 and 300 people on four different channels uh, nice. that we're broadcasting live to every Saturday night. And uh, we are, I think, the premier laser engraving channel on YouTube. So uh, I want to thank you all for making us that for live streams. And, uh, you know, there, I just can't believe how many people are interested at looking uh, watching us do our thing every Saturday night. True tech. But that's it, called the safety squint. Yeah, uh don't yeah. Oh make sure you always <laughs> wear glasses or <laughs> lasers. That's for that's for sure. <clears throat> um Rick, somebody was asking about uh the pass through on the laser matic. If you you run that with light burn, right? Yes I do. Mm -hmm. So, um, I use print cut on that. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, the pass through tutorial that I was talking about earlier, the one that I recently did, or I'm sure you yeah. have one on there, on there too. Rich. Yeah. I, I, my, mine is about saving a botch job, something that you took off the laser. But, uh, you know, yours is a great tutorial. And so is Jason's on, uh, I, I like Jason's three year old print and cut video on Lightburn Software uh, YouTube channel you know, better than the newer one that he did, you know, where they've refined their video uh, making skills. But uh, yeah, I like the older one. I used that to make a, like a three foot by five foot sign that went in the mall, local mall over top of the, one of the businesses there. I just yeah. watched that the other day. Uh, Emily, do you also teach the business? Ask me. Yes, she does. Emily, go ahead and answer this question. Okay. So, um, it depends. So in my course, I have two different uh, enrollment options. Tier one is where you get access to all of the material. It's over 40 lessons. Um, and really the goal is to help you understand your laser, okay? Understand the software, understand what to look for. I show you, I mess up intentionally. I start fires intentionally uh, in my course. I have collisions intentionally so I can teach you from mistakes, how to, you know, get better, right? And what to do, not to panic. Because I think for a lot of people in the beginning, getting a laser can be so scary. And any little yeah. thing that goes wrong, you think you broke a very expensive piece of machinery that you just invested <coughs> money in. Exactly. So yeah. my course is really about empowering you um, and giving you the confidence that you need to run your laser safely and efficiently, right? Because in the beginning, right. you have high anxiety and you have really low knowledge. So what I do is I focus on increasing your knowledge so that your anxiety will naturally decrease. Okay, mm -hmm. so the course is focused on your laser learning curve. Okay, the business one is a whole other one. But to answer your question, um, for my students who enroll in the tier two option, they get access to my private Facebook group. Um, and in there, I go live every week and I answer anything that the students want. Um, and you have lifetime access to that group. So every time class is in session, I go live every week. So it's during those conversations where it's more of an intimate experience with my students. And I will cover anything they want to know, whether it's business, marketing, lasering, uh, you name it. But it's not. It's I, I just want to jump here, jump in here, and say that uh, Emily went from 
the very beginning of knowing nothing about a laser in four years to where she is today and her marketing yeah. tips are uh, priceless. And you, you'll, you'll see that. But I wanted to jump back to a question over here. Uh, it's hey, not Rich, so much you, about light burn. Her link. What's that? Did you share her link that's in private chat? I did. Oh, okay. uh, so uh, Viking Wind is saying, does Lightburn support Glowforge? It's actually the other way around. Glowforge does not support Lightburn. At least Glowforge is a proprietary system, and they want you to do everything in the cloud. So that's why I've, I've never recommended them. And uh, ready for the Dave results? Is, hang on one second, Patrick. Dave is asking, mm -hmm. is buying a, a used CO2 too risky? I would say so, yeah. <laughs> in most cases, yeah. I, I think it would depend on the brand. I wouldn't get one. If you're going to get a used laser, I would highly recommend get, getting one that there is like a lot of content on, on YouTube that can help you. If you get yeah. one that nobody knows about, that's, that's going to be scary. But if you got one that a lot of people are using, it might be a gamble. It might be, I don't know. Yeah. And I think it's, it more depends on the person that's selling it and how they used it and how they maintained it is the, is the important thing so you never know about that and i would say in my opinion i would certainly never buy a, a new co2 that came out great patrick yeah that is awesome so, so that's the one i just ran live no sandy or anything like that so you're probably going to get the same answer uh from all of us here and it's you know the source that you have to be concerned with and in my opinion, I would say go with a uh, JPT MOBA. Yeah, I think absolutely. Would agree. Yeah. I see. I've got four fiber lasers. I would definitely recommend uh, JPT MOBA. <laughs> <laughs> John, that last the last supper was actually done for uh, my brother-in-law. So this was actually done for my brother-in-law, and it's gonna it's eventually it's gonna have different woods with a mahogany uh frame around it and all kinds of stuff but this one got caught in the flood the great flood of uh <laughs> this shop from the rain they built houses around my shop here uh, uh, and they're like two feet above my ground level so all of their properties drain right into the back of this shop and yeah. <laughs> what laser did you do that on rich that was done on the NAJ Max 3, and I made some modifications to it. Um, I extended the X and the Y uh, by about uh, a foot on the X and about two feet on the Y because I was doing a different project. Uh, I did another project for a camp sign on that, uh, but that was the NAJ Max 3 with the A40640 uh, 10 watt module. Yeah. Mine's done if you want to pop that up. Just yes, showing sir. my uh, cheap Chinese CO2 there. If people want to see what laser I just used. Cool. And then while that's up, let me answer a question from Tim. Uh, that is cold rolled steel. I get it from a, a supplier. A friend of mine works at a metal stamping and shearing plant. He just brings me stuff. And uh, let's go back to Patrick's. Patrick's which cameras? That is so the uh, cheap Chinese. <laughs> yeah, it's a no-name brand. I've got a uh, hack together with the with the automatic air assist uh, kit from Cloudray. I put hybrid steppers on it, upgraded the mirrors, and it works. It's not great, but it works. I, I it, think I, I'm, if you I'm cheap going... out on a CO2, you're going to have to tinker to get it running. I'm going to agree with Alan. Uh, I think it came out beautiful. And that file, too, is from uh, Patriot Nation Design. And like I said earlier, yep. if, you, if you sign up for the uh, their newsletter, they'll send you a link to some free files like once a month. Yeah. Definitely worth it. Emily, what, uh, what fiber laser did you buy? 
or if you can't talk about it yet, I understand. <laughs> so I, okay, if you missed earlier, I, I shared that I'm also the brand ambassador for Eon Laser USA. So I do a lot of their marketing. I'm basically the face of the of the brand. I don't, I, I, they have my face on a van. Like, <laughs> so uh, the fiber I have is actually one from e, uh, Eon Laser USA, which is actually a company called Engraving Machines Plus. It's Engraving Machines Plus, and then they own uh, Eon Laser USA and their metal cutting division. So the fiber I have is a very nice EMP fiber. I have a video on it about it on my channel. Um, but that's to answer your question. That's the one that I have. Nice. Yep. Oh, we're we're gonna see Edward at the ISA. Awesome. See, nice. I know we had to let him know we were gonna be there. How exciting! Very cool. Patrick, um, how long did it take? Uh, how long that did was it take? Right about right. one hour. Okay. With those settings. That's, that's what my photo was. It was about 47 minutes. 50, 47 to 50 minutes. What were your um, professions before, before coming? Well, I still do my job part-time, but I am a pharmacist by trade. Part-time? got into lasers. Yep. So that's I'm a part-time like pharmacist full -time. now. Yeah. Uh -huh. I've been working full-time the last six weeks and probably have another six more to go now. And I was uh, in IT. I had my own uh, company where I did uh, networking and uh, ATM software for some local banks in my area for about 20 years. I was a licensed builder for 30 years, finished trim carpenter, um, and I primarily focused on log homework. So, so. Okay, so we are... Uh, getting down to the end of our stream, we're at 90 minutes, which is normally what we do. Uh, that's what a lot of people like to see is about 90 minutes. We have, uh, we still have over 230 people that are watching. So, uh, I want to give a last call for comments. <laughs> so, if, you, if you have any questions, the comments, you can, you know, just keep going as you're going. But if I, you have Jerry, go ahead. I have a question. And I, was, and I was a union laborer for over 20 years here in Las Vegas. I don't we hire anybody to do anything. I do everything myself. And then before that, I was a truck driver for a long time. Well, and I'm sorry. I we forgot about you, Jerry. I way too much weight. <laughs> uh, okay, so last call for questions. Uh, do you have any questions? Well, I, just wait, to... I was a high school history teacher. Awesome. <laughs> I get teacher too, right? <laughs> yes. I just want to say that right down there, right there, we still have uh, Emily's information down there. And I want to ask you a, a personal favor to go and subscribe to her YouTube channel because she is just the most undersubscribed YouTube channel that I have ever seen because she has some great informative, entertaining um, videos that you need to go. You need to go and watch. Thank you, Rich. Uh, let's see. Uh, Steve says, any chance you can link the fonts you used in these files? Um, well, no, I don't do that because uh, just because all of the fonts, I can't just give away other people's fonts. They all have rules and regulations to them. Even if they're free, you have to look at their little terms of service. So I don't want to give away somebody else's font. Uh, if you go to the font, Dot com or freefonts.com. That's where I get all of my fonts. And I don't even remember what the font was that um, I used in this file. Uh, in fact, this computer that I'm using here doesn't even have this font on it because I opened the file. But you can use it as is because the font is now embedded in the in the Lightburn file. And uh, 2380 milligram yeah. says, history is the best. <laughs> You know, it's funny. I can tell my kid, like they, they just come from a family that really enjoys history. Like I, we just had the book fair this year and all of my kids wanted history books, you know, <laughs> other kids wanted bluey. My kids wanted like, I don't know, they're, one got a book on the Star Spangled Banner. The other one got a book on the Lewis and Clark expedition. <laughs> like, That's always good. Okay. And, and you can uh, leave Harold, that comment up. Leave that comment Harold, up the rest Harold, of the stream, Harold, please. Harold, I thought that I was the other pretty face. I don't know what that comment is. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Pop Pop. Thank you so much. Thank you. 
Thank you, Alan. Thank you for being here. Nice. Uh, v is saying it's nice to see you on the stream tonight. And uh, Emily has said she might even join us in the future. We're going to keep her on our guest list and send out the emails. But, you know, Emily has got uh, she's got a really hectic work week and does her thing on the weekends. But hopefully uh, once in a while, she'll answer that email and uh, come and join us again. I will. I have to come back and make a project because now I, I feel like yeah. I didn't do a project. I got to come back and make a project. <laughs> Sounds good. We we can coordinate and we'll have a like uh, a group project. We can okay. all do, yeah. do a different take on it or something like that. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, if Emily answers the uh, the email, I'll do like uh, like we do, and I will send her the files that we're going to make, and maybe she'd be interested in making some of the stuff that we make on the co2 let's do it awesome that's good to hear peter thank you thank you so much okay so we are at uh five six minutes over our limit even though there's no limit on youtube we could be here for hours <laughs> but i don't see any more actual questions coming up so i want to thank everybody for being with us tonight i want to especially thank uh, emily down there for joining us as a guest host. She has been one of my favorites for four, four years now. Four years. I've been hey, watching hey, her Rich. videos. Yeah. I think Jeremy might have had something to say just a couple minutes ago. Do you know, okay, remember well, what it was, well, Jeremy? Yeah. He probably forgot by now. But nope. go ahead. Two questions. I saw two questions ask the same thing. Where okay. can people get the file from tonight? Oh. Oh, well, that's under... It's already posted under my live stream on my channel and it is already posted on the lasermakersrealm.com so as usual you'll you'll find the zip package on lasermakersrealm.com that's our blog it's going to be the very top post and if you click on that post or click read more you'll see underneath the video you're going to see the file that you could the zip file that you can download and make the projects that uh, I showed you today our projects for yourself and you'll really be happy with uh the way that the kleenex box comes out i've made these for a lot of people now and they absolutely love it so uh you know that that's something that i think everybody's really going to uh enjoy uh we're still here jc you didn't miss the live chat it's <laughs> as you can see it's still, still going. going on uh normally we um we do these every two weeks. We have different projects and we have free files and they're usually quick and easy projects that everybody can make. And we live stream every two weeks at 830 Eastern Standard Time. So uh, we're here every two weeks. Come and come and join us. We'd love it. Subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to like the, the video before we go too. And Greg has a question. Could I do 3D engraving on wood with the uh, 20 watt rolling? So the Lasermatic can do just about anything. The 3D engraving, if you're talking about a 3D sliced image, know that you do on a fiber laser in Lightburn. That, that's where you get the 3D slicing. But uh, like you Patrick's saw- Patrick's grabbing in, a sample right now to show. Okay. Yeah. Like you saw, yes, you can do it if you know how to set your settings and layers. You have to have several layers doing different things. And like you saw in my uh, Last Supper, the big Last Supper I showed earlier, that is a, a, a virtual 3D engraving. So I'm going to have a video out on this soon. But that is walnut. That walnut. is awesome. So that you got is beautiful. Three, 3D effect with uh, the diode laser. You can see how deep it is. And uh, JC, yes, you can use these on a 5-watt laser. You just need to do a material test and make sure that you can engrave and cut. Uh, and that's easy enough to do. Once you get your engrave and cut settings, uh, my files come with my settings. So everyone is going to have to have their own settings. They'll have to have their own material test. But yeah, you can do them on any laser. I used to do them on a, a 2.5 watt laser. I cut three millimeter wood. <laughs> now that took several passes, but if you do a, uh, if you do a material test, you'll be able to figure that out. All right. So here we all are. Everyone saying thank you in the chat. Thank you all. 
thank you all. Yes, thank you. Thank you, viewers. Thank you, thank you very viewers. much. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Jerry, for being here. Thank you, Jerry, Jeremy, our newest host. And a big thank you to that girl down there, that mom with the laser. Thank you, guys. This was fun. Very thank nice you, meeting you, Emily. We'll see you in two weeks. We're out. Come back in two weeks. We'll see you then. Take care, everybody. Have a great night.